Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you, Father, for this time of being able to gather around your word. We bless you and we thank you. You are so good and so awesome, O oh God. We just bless you for this experience, O oh Lord. Now, Father, as we go into your word, we pray that you would help us to better understand the word of God. So that we can live better for you and glorify Jesus in this world, oh God. Speak to me and through me. Let your people not hear me, but you who dwell within me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may sit, please. And so we have come to the conclusion of our sermon series, which is entitled, It's Complicated. And part number five of this sermon series is entitled Family Matters. Family Matters. So through this series, I hope that you have been able to see that relationships do not have to be as complicated as we make them. And we, when we ground our relationships in the Word of God, we are better equipped to handle the different stages we go through in relationships. In this last sermon, we're going to look to see how the Bible talks to us and what the Bible says about the family, about the husband and wife and the children all in one household. And we're going to look at what the Bible says about family, but we're going to look at it through the lens of blended families, with, which is important because blended families are increasing in our day and age. A blended family has at least one person who comes to the marriage and they already have a child or children already. And this is important because not only is it increasing, but in America, one third of all of the marriages in America produce blended families. And even in minority communities, it's even higher than that. When I look at my own experience and my own extended family, I'm speaking of my grandparents and uh, my mom and dad, aunts, uncles, siblings, first cousins, my, my, my family and extended family, only two of them are not blended families. I grew up in a household that was a blended family, my mom and my stepdad. And then my biological dad went and got married too. And they came, or she came with some kids. And so, so that's why y'all can say, well, I can see why Pastor Steve kind of crazy. He got all this stuff going on, right? And then when you look at myself and Sister Lisa, we too are a blended family. And so just in my own extended family, we are a mixed bag of blended family. And just by a show of hands, how many of you in here have someone who you love and care about who is in a blended family or you yourself are a part of a blended family? Just by a show of hands. All right. Now, if you're able to see that, you can see why blended families has to be talked about in church. Because there are a lot of people who are going through and living in blended families, and a lot of times the church does not talk about it. And so while having a biological family can be difficult, biological meaning that through children came through the marriage of the husband and wife, and those are the only kids that are in the family, that by itself can be difficult. But then when you add on to that, also exes, right? So ex-husband, ex-wife, and, or, or, or ex-boyfriend you know, and girlfriend, baby mama, baby daddy, you know what I'm talking about. You add that on to the mix of the family, and then you add on the kids that come from those different families, the family can, be all, can become a possible area for disaster. And then what if the other parent, the ex, they get married? And then they have kids. 
And then now you have all of these different situations and all of these different problems in that other family. They have their own rules and the other family has their own traditions and problems. And it's all this big old issue of complication. And so this morning, we're going to look at what the scripture says about blended families. Now, I believe that biological families can be able to gain some wisdom from what the Bible says this morning, but I I really believe that we as a church need to help blended families. And so when we look at the scriptures, we find many blended families inside of the scripture. You can see Abraham, you can see uh, Jacob, you can see David. Now, understand that they had a different kind of complex family structure. They had multiple wives and multiple marriages. But the issue is that they still had these different marriages and these different kids coming together as a result of these marriages. And so they had this complex family structure, even in the Bible, but one that is even more closer to home for us, for our modern day experience of blended family, is the family that Jesus grew up in. Did you realize that Jesus grew up in a blended family? Mary was his biological mom, but Joseph was not his biological dad. So today, Joseph would have been considered a step-parent. Jesus was conceived through miraculous conception. It was a miracle. Mary became pregnant with Jesus while she was engaged to Joseph. And can can I tell you, at the very beginning of their relationship, marriage, it became kind of rocky. When he found out that she was pregnant, he was ready to go ahead and to to stop the marriage, to stop the wedding. But God intervened, thank the Lord. He intervened and showed Joseph that Mary was not unfaithful to him, right? Everything that was going on in Mary's life was the result of what God was doing. And when you read through Jesus' birth narrative, you find Joseph right there taking care of Mary and Jesus, providing for Mary and Jesus. Listen, when you get married, if you marry someone who has kids, they become your responsibility too. Those kids become your responsibility. So it is not you need to see about your kids. You need to see about what's going on with your kids. No, it is we need to see about the kids. We need to see about our kids. That child becomes your responsibility when you say, I do. So when you get married, you are saying, what's yours is mine. What's mine is yours. That would include the good stuff and the bad stuff. That means the assets and the liabilities, the revenue and the debt. The kids, hold on to your seats, and the child support. Both of y'all's responsibility. So listen, if you can't handle their bad and their debts and their previous responsibilities, do not marry them, period. That's why you need to talk about everything before you get married. Nothing is off the table when I'm talking about marrying you. I need to know everything. I need to know your credit. Not what you tell me. I need to see the report. Let me see the report. I need to see it. Right? I need to know your health. And I don't need you to tell me your health. We scheduling an appointment with the doctor so that I can be there and hear what the doctor has to say. I need to know. I need to know how much you pay in child support. And how much you bring in every two weeks. I don't want you to tell me. I want to see the paycheck stub. Let, let me see. Because what I'm saying is when I marry you, your debts are my debts. 
Your previous responsibilities are now my responsibilities. I got to see everything. And the last thing you want to do in a marriage is fight over child support. Last thing you want to do is fight over if you're going to buy your kids some jeans or not. Or if you're going to have some money to be able to take the kids out to eat or not. That's the last thing you want to fight over in marriage. So when you say I do, you are taking on the responsibility of now of the well-being and the caring for and being responsible for kids that may have not come out of your loins. Whether they live in your house or come over for the weekend, it's your responsibility now. If you can't handle that, don't marry somebody with kids. Because those kids deserve to be taken care of. They deserve to be seen about and provided for. They deserve to not to be neglected or fought over as if they're a pawn in a game. So if you can't handle the fact of money going outside of the house to take care of more children that you did not birth or you were not a part of at the very beginning, do not marry that person. Period. Not only do you see Joseph providing for Jesus, but you also see Joseph protecting Jesus. When King Herod was trying to kill baby Jesus... You see Joseph coming and taking Mary and Jesus and taking them down to Egypt to protect them. And then when Herod dies, you see Joseph taking Jesus and Mary to a small rural town called Nazareth to live in order to protect them. Parents, it is our job to keep children safe. Not exposing them to too much too fast. That we must purposefully put them into healthy environments where they can be raised. So therefore, parents, we must, we must strive to make our households healthy and based off of the word of God. So this will require parents to sit down and and talk to one another and communicate to each other and try to figure out how are they going to govern their household? How are they going to be able to interact with the different children? How are they going to be able to make sure that they have a plan in place on how we're going to raise the kids here? This is important not only for biological families, but this is also important for blended families. Because more than likely, those children are going to be moving from house to house on the weekends, coming over to a different house. And you want to be able to be clear to the children, this is how we do it here. This is how we live here. This is how we run our house. So therefore, speaking of protecting kids, Right, and especially in biological families, do not put them into adult matters. Don't make them become your means of communication with your ex. Well, I don't want to talk to them, so tell your mama, tell your daddy this or that. So now the kid got to go in petrified and terrified because now they got to tell mama what daddy done said or vice versa. And the kid get all of the heat, get all of the pressure, all of the cussing. Come on, we in church. Get it all. When it should have been directed to you. Protect your kids. Keep them out of adult matters. Therefore, you be an adult. No matter how much it pains you, or they frustrate you, or now they make your skin crawl. They didn't make your skin crawl before. That's how you got the baby. So no matter how much it frustrates you, you talk to the parent. Protect your kids as much as possible from the mess of your previous relationship. And let me say this. Do not attempt 
to poison your child's mind towards their parent and step parent. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I don't like them. You know, you shouldn't like them. And they don't do this and they don't do that. And, and you know that they just terrible and blah, 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 blah. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. That child needs to respect their parent. That child still loves their parent. That child is confused about what's going on in both households, and you need to protect that child. As well as you should not try to poison them about stepmom or stepdad. Having them to project your feelings onto a relationship that's growing with them. So you say, okay, Pastor, that's, that's, that sounds okay, I guess, all right? So, but what about if I don't like what's going on over in the other house? What about if the things that's going on over there, I just, I just don't agree with? Now, I am talking about preference, not illegal activity. Two different things, all right? Now, preference. I don't like the rules that they make. I don't like what shows they allow them to watch. I don't like the fact that they allow them to, to stay up later than they would if they were in my house. What do I do then? There's three things at least you need to do. First, you need to pray over your kids. Whenever they leave your house, you need to pray. And I'm not talking about, Lord, just bless them. I'm, Lord, cover their mind. Lord, cover their hearts. Lord, cover their sexuality. Lord, cover that house. Jesus. Two, you need to talk to your kids. And let them know this is why we don't do that here. This is why we do it like this here. Right? And don't do one of those, you know, because I, because I said so. Right? Uh, listen, why, why, Dad, why can't we do that? Because I said so. Mom, why can't I do that? Because I said so. Listen, when they go over to the other house, they're going to have a different set of said souls. So you have to be able to communicate with your kids and let them know this is why we do this. And then three, live a godly life before. Let them see what holiness looks like. Let them see what a godly life looks like. Now listen, have fun. Don't be a stick in the mud, right? Don't, don't do that. But have fun with your kids. But make sure that you are modeling before them how to live for Jesus. Show them what it means to love your spouse. Show them what it means to love your kids. Show them what it means to govern your house based off what the word of God says. You be a positive force for good. A positive force for righteousness in that child's life. Because here's the thing. When they grow up and mature, they will know the difference. They will be able to see the difference between the two households. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So not only does Joseph provide for Jesus and protect Jesus, but he also prepares Jesus. Yes, he prepares Jesus to be a responsible adult. There's a couple occasions in, in Jesus' earthly ministry where we're able to see that when Jesus go back to Nazareth where, he, Nazareth, where he grew up, and he began to preach and teach there's two events that you see in particular. That's Matthew 13 and, and Mark 6. When Jesus goes back, they're preaching and teaching and healing folks. The, the people at Nazareth, they get upset and get offended by him. Listen to what they say in Matthew 13, 55. They say, is this not the carpenter's son? And then they say in Mark chapter 6, verse 3, they ask, is this not the carpenter?" Right? So this is what it shows us. It shows us that Joseph was a carpenter, and then he teaches Jesus how to be a carpenter. Right? Therefore, teaching him a trade, teaching him how to take care of himself, teaching him how to make sure that he is a responsible adult. 
Listen, as a step parent, you are there to help that child and those children to become responsible adults. Just like the other adults that is in that child's life and family. So instead of, instead of you attempting to go into this child's life and instantly be tempting to become a disciplinarian and instantly trying to get authority and be an authority figure over this child, why don't you go in first showing biblical love? Why don't you first go in showing guidance and, and, and mentoring and direction before you try to come in and try to be daddy or mommy? Show them how to be a responsible adult one day. Now understand, yes, we're not talking about respect here. Yes, they need to respect you. That's a given. We're talking about you coming in and trying to dominate the house because you're the man or it's only one queen in the house. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth because we family, praise Jesus. Especially when it comes to preteens and teens. Initially, the respect that you receive is because you're an adult and because you are married to mommy or daddy. That's it. That's the reason why they are showing you respect. That is called positional authority. It is your position that gives you authority in their life. And that is only through marriage. But when you begin to spend time with the child, loving the child or children and guiding them and protecting them and providing for them and being there for them, what happens is you move from positional authority to influential authority to where you're able to influence the child now. But listen, that takes time. Can't nobody just come into your life and start telling you what to do. It takes time for them to begin to influence you. When they begin to trust you and love you because you have been there on a consistent basis and leading them and guiding them and loving them, you begin to win influence over them. So in our text that we read, we find an interesting moment in Jesus' life when he's 12 years old. The Bible doesn't give us a lot about Jesus' childhood or even early adulthood. But in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52, Dr. Luke, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, exposes us to a moment in Jesus' childhood. Jesus went to Jerusalem with Joseph and, and Mary. More than likely, they are traveling in a caravan, not the car, but a large group of people. That was supposed to be funnier. Come on, y'all. Come on. All right. So, so they're driving in the caravan. Y'all got to lighten up. This has been a serious series. Jesus. All right. So, so they're traveling in, in a caravan, right? And so, large group of people, and they're going to Jerusalem for a Passover celebration. When the celebration is over, they're on their way back home. Everyone is heading back home, and they take a day's journey. And next thing you know, Joseph and Mary look around, and they can't find Jesus. And so the Bible lets us know that when they go back, they are trying to find him. And I would encourage you, if you get some time this evening, matter of fact, make some time this evening. Read Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. I believe you will find some interesting information as it relates to family as well as blended families. Yeah, yeah. But what's interesting is in, in 11 verses, you see the word they eight times. The word them twice. And the word us once. Every time those words are specifically associated with Joseph and Mary. That they are together. They are a unit. They're moving as a unit. So husbands and wives, husband and wife, you need to be a unit. One group, 
Just you and your husband, you and your wife. You need to be a unit. Y'all need to be on the same page. And that would also mean for blended families, husband and wife, you need to be on the same page. Now, I'm going to make a very controversial statement. And some of y'all ain't going to like this, but that's okay. Your marriage must take priority over your parenting. Your marriage must take priority over your parenting. That's not just for biological families, but that is also for blended families. Now, I'm not saying that you don't need to take care of your kids. I'm not saying that you don't need to protect your kids or you don't need to be there for your kids. But your marriage must take place or priority over your parenting. Listen, if you got to protect your kids from your husband or of your wife, you should not have married them. And here's the reality. The reality is kids are a temporary assignment. When they get 18, 19, 39, they're going to leave. But marriage, marriage is a lifelong assignment till death. Kids are going to move out and live their own life and get tired of mama and daddy butting their nose in. So, if you sacrifice your marriage for your children, you're sacrificing your future blessing and your future happiness for your kids who are going to leave you. And then when you get older and your kids get older, you're going to be clinging around them because you ain't got no life. Calling them. What y'all doing? Can y'all come over? I'm going to be over there. You know I ain't got nothing going on. That's because you divorced your husband or your wife. (laughs) So this is especially important in blended families. I'm telling y'all. This is important. Why? Because here's the thing. In biological families, generally it is the marriage First, and then the kids, right? So they got married, everybody fell in love, right? They got married, and out of that love grew some little kids. But in blended families, it is kids, then marriage. You had the responsibility of them kids first, and you loved them kids first. And now you got this husband or this wife, and now they're competing for your affection. When you should have been, no matter what's going on, I'm going to love my kids, I'm going to protect my kids, I'm going to be there for my kids. But listen, kids, y'all going to leave. My marriage is a priority over my parenting. I love you, I'm going to be there for you. But when y'all leave, I still need to have a marriage. So some parents choose their kids over their spouse and it destroys their marriage. Because your spouse isn't in first place after Jesus as the Bible models for us. In Genesis 2, verses 24 and 25. Also in our text, we find uh, Joseph searching for Jesus, just like Mary is searching for Jesus. You find Joseph being anxious and concerned about Jesus, just like Mary is concerned and anxious about Jesus. And what's amazing, even when they get there and find Jesus in the temple, teaching and asking questions and entering in conversations with these scribes, you see Mary and Joseph both being amazed at Jesus. What I'm trying to show you is that Joseph loved Jesus and treated him as if he was his biological son. He was concerned just like Mary, anxious just like Mary, searching just like Mary. So listen, even if those kids, as I said before, did not come from your loins, you need to treat them as if they did. You need to love them as if they did. Understand now, Joseph and Mary had other kids. But you don't see in the scriptures where they're making any type of difference or favoritism towards any of the kids. For all practical purposes, Jesus was Joseph's son and Joseph was Jesus' father. Even Mary tells Jesus in verse 48, she says, your father 
and I have sought you anxiously. Now, we don't know if, if Jesus called Joseph Abba, which is father. We don't know. We don't know that. Not even really the point. But here's, a, here's an interesting point, right? About only 30% of all children end up calling their step-parent mom or dad. That's even adults. So here's the thing. It's not what label the children put on you that's important. What's important is the relationship that you have with the child, the love you have with the child, the honor and the respect that you have with the child, and the relationship that is growing with the child, not what title they call you. And Jesus says something interesting in verse 49. He says, I must be about my father's business. Now, I understand. Now, when you read the scripture, Joseph and Mary, they both was confused. Like, what are you talking about? We don't even understand what you're saying. Yo, yo daddy right here, that's Joseph. What are you talking about? Right? But what it shows is, is that Jesus knew that Joseph was not his biological father. Jesus knew that his father was God the father. We don't know how he knew, but he knew. And then something amazing happens. After they leave the temple and go back to Nazareth, the Bible says that Jesus was subject to them. Not to Mary only, but also to Joseph. He was subjected unto his biological mom and his stepdad. That he honored both of them respected both of them, and he knew Joseph was not his dad. So children, follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Respect your parents. Love your parents. Honor your parents. And that would include your step parents. Because they are there in your life to love you. They're there in your life to protect you. They're there in your life to provide for you and to guide you to Jesus and to the future. So not only only did Jesus have a blended family while he was on earth, even now while he sits in heaven, he has a blended family down here on earth. Everyone who receives salvation and makes Jesus Christ the Lord of their life, they enter into his family. They join the family of God. And here's the thing about the family of God. There are different people, different experiences, different colors, different ethnicities coming together, joining the family of God, and nobody deserves to be there. We are adopted into the family of God, Ephesians 1, 5 says. And the Father loves us and treats us as if we had never been adopted. And Jesus, he shares his inheritance with us. We become joint heirs, the Bible says, with Christ Jesus. So the church of Jesus Christ is an amazing, blended family filled with the love and grace of the Father and the Son. And listen, if you're here today, you can be a part of that family. You can join the family of God. With all these crazy people with crazy backgrounds all coming together and glorifying the name of Jesus. You can be a part of that family. By repenting of your sin, believing the gospel, believing in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, confessing Jesus, and making him the Lord of your life. And salvation will be yours today, but you will also join this amazing family that will spend eternity with a glorious father. And the triumphant elder brother. And his name is King Jesus. I encourage you. Give your life to Jesus this morning. 
If you want to give your life to the Lord, I just ask you to say a prayer with me. Let us bow. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Father, I believe you sent Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he came back to life three days later. Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. Now, Father, I pray for family. I pray, oh God, for blended families. I pray, oh God, that you will help them to make it through the hurdles of family life. Help them, oh God, to, to come together as a cohesive unit, oh God. Glorifying you in that household. Loving those kids, oh God. And showing the glory of the Lord through their family. Father, I pray. That you will help them to show grace and love towards one another. Because nobody is perfect. Help them, O oh Lord, to see past the pain and to show love and grace towards each other. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.